Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the program. Here we are in class number 171. And I want to welcome you back. Hopefully, that, hopefully you're following along, paying attention to all the material. Today we'll start with a little review. Yesterday we saw the verb to steal. Yesterday, the verb to steal, robar. To every day I steal, yesterday I stole, lately I have stolen. Mm. Well, that's not true. I haven't stolen anything lately. Te robé tu bolígrafo cuando no mirabas. Did I steal your pen when you weren't looking? Yes, Kyle, you stole my pen when I wasn't looking. Did I steal your book yesterday? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, Kyle, you stole my book yesterday. Did I steal any money from you last week? Yes, you stole some money from me. Some money. Some, some money. So I'm linking the M sounds. Some money, some money, some money from me. You stole some money from me. Remember, we're closing the lips with that M sound. You stole some money from me last week. Mm -hmm. have, you st have I stolen any money from you so far this week? Yes, Kyle, you've stolen some money from me so far this week. Hmm. Ask me if I've ever stolen money from a bank. Ro to rob the bank. But I, let's use the verb to steal. Ask me if I've ever stolen any money from the bank. Kyle, have you ever stolen any money from the bank? No, I've never stolen any money from the bank. I don't steal. I'm not a thief. I'm not a thief, ladies and gentlemen. I don't steal. Yesterday I talked about steal and rob. He stole my money. He robbed me. He robbed me. What did he steal? He stole my money. When he robbed me, he stole my money. If he hadn't robbed me, he wouldn't have stolen my money. Right? So when someone is robbed, things are stolen. We don't, we don't steal people. No, we steal things from people. People are robbed. People get robbed. Pe people rob other people. I've never robbed anyone. I've never stolen anything. I've been robbed. I was robbed once. The thieves, or the thief, I still don't know who did it, but the thief stole my phone. This was a few years ago. Yeah, I told the story yesterday. So, to steal is the verb we're looking at here. But this is a review, so let's move on into the, the next point that we saw yesterday, in the long run, a la larga, a la larga, in the long run. And I mentioned yesterday the difference between in the long run and eventually, like al final. Al final, eventually. A little bit different from in the long run, because in the long run gives the idea that you have to be persistent and keep going. It will take a long time, but eventually, finally, after a long time, you will achieve whatever, success or whatever it is. Something will happen. Whereas eventually just means at some point. It could be, could be in five seconds or it could be in 50 years. I don't know. But eventually it will happen. Eventually... Eventually, the building will be, the tower will be struck by lightning. It could happen tonight or it could happen in, in the year 2080. I don't know. But eventually it will happen at some point. Okay, so give me an affirmative answer to my questions. Did everything work out in the long run? Yes, everything worked out in the long run. If you study, will you learn a lot in the long run? Yes, if I study, I'll learn a lot in the long run. Does hard work pay off in the long run? 
Yes, hard work pays off in the long run. Now at home, many of you are saying, pay off? ¿Qué es eso? Pay off. To provide benefits. To be beneficial. To give some advantage. To pay off. It's finally paying off. Okay, it's like uh, dar fruta, I suppose. To, to bear fruit, maybe you say. But to, to pay off. If you work hard, it'll pay off in the long run, I promise. It's like exercising. If you exercise every day, you might not notice results tomorrow or even the day after. But in the long run, it will pay off. There will be benefits in the long run, I promise. Will they be happy in the long run? Yes, they'll be happy in the long run. In the long run. Word of the day. All right, it is time for the word of the day. You heard that sound. Friends, it is time for our word of the day. The word of the day today is, well, in fact, it's two words in English. It's well off. Acomodado, well off. He is well off. Financially, he's doing well. His business is successful, so he's well off. He's been quite well off ever since he signed that lucrative contract. He's well off. Maybe it's almost like saying he's rich. But he's, he's well off. He's doing well. Financially, he's, he's quite, quite stable. He's doing very well. He's, a bit, he's, he's certainly above average. He's well off. To be well off. Bill Gates is more than well off. He's just plain old rich. He's rich. Is he well off? Sure he is. You can say that. More than that, he's rich. But well off is a very, sort of a reserved way of saying that someone is adinerado. They've got money. They're well off. They're well off. Yeah, well off. Two Fs, of course. Off. Not of, but off. One thing I want to mention here is the difference, the pronunciation. I've talked about the pronunciation, the F and the V, several times. I can't remember how many times. Well, I haven't... Many, many, many times. The V in English. And people say to me, it, it kind of bothers me when my students say, one F or two. I say, off. And they say one F or two. Off has two Fs. If I say of, it's one F, of. But of is like oven, which is orno, orno, oven, where, where I cook my, where I cook chicken in the oven, in el orno. Of, oven, but of, de, as in O-F. So when we have the O-F, of, the F is pronounced like a V. That is, is the theater, that is vocalized. Of, of. It is made of, like sangria is made of wine and fruit and whatever, juices or whatever it is. It's made of. It's made of, of, of. So that V, it's, it's a V sound, but it's an F, the letter F, because the F and the V have a special relationship. I was talking about this the other day. The F and the V, the only difference is the V is voiced. It's vocalized. But in the case of the word of, in the case of the word of, it's pronounced like a V. Because remember, the V has nothing to do with the B. No tiene nada que ver. Nothing to do with the B. The V is an F, which is voiced. That is, I'm activating my vocal cords. Okay? So here, off, if I say off, f, f, it's like I'm whispering. It's like I'm whispering off. My vocal cords aren't activated. But if I activate my vocal cords, then the v, 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 I have the very good V sound. And that's the same as the word of, of. The king of Spain, for example. 
okay? That V sound, which we use in the word of, which is O-F, single F, okay? Whew. Okay, I'm going to move on now to talk about another thing that, um, well, that, that, that was a point that kind of, um, it's one of these things I've explained so many times, and so I hope that it makes sense, and I hope that it is clear, because the thing about pronunciation is, yes, it's, it can be difficult, entre comillas, difficult. People, oh, pronunciation is difficult, but you have to just memorize certain combinations and certain sounds, and the way that's the way it is. That's how it is. It's not a difficult sound to make. It's just like you have to memorize that word of vocabulary. Well, also you have to memorize how to pronounce it. Right? We have a lot of things. When we learn Spanish, we have to memorize a lot of things. We have to memorize gender. Lapith. Why do we say el lapiz, not la lapiz? I, str I make a lot of mistakes with gender. Masculine, feminine. But So we have to memorize gender. You have to memorize pronunciation, right? We're, we're, we're even, okay? That's a trade-off, okay? So please try to make an effort with that, with pronunciation. Let's move on now to another thing that, that uh, is quite interesting, which is have. The verb to have, so the structure, I have a pen versus I've got a pen. And this can be, to a certain extent, like opening, we say opening a can of worms. Now, I am going to suggest something to you here, and the, your, your, your manual talks about how the have got structure is a bit more British, and the simple have structure is more American. And the book, which I believe entirely, I, I, I'm a firm believer in this, the book, the book reminds you that, um, that the have structure is much more simple, and it follows the same rules. Here, the verb to have is behaving like every other verb, except the verb to be, in that we're using an auxiliary verb, in the negative, I don't have. Because that the have got is essentially an exception. If you want to memorize exceptions and you think you can use this properly, go ahead. But if you want to speak, th th there, are, there are two options. You can speak perfectly correctly. E both are perfectly correct. I've got a pen, I have a pen. I tell my students to focus on the simple structure, I have a pen. Because, you change it to the negative, it behaves just like any other verb. I don't have a pen. I have a pen. I don't have a pen. I walk to work. I don't walk to work. I eat sandwiches. I don't eat sandwiches. It's behaving like any other verb in the past. I didn't have a pen yesterday. I, ha I had a pen yesterday. I didn't have a pen yesterday. I walked to work yesterday. I didn't walk to work yesterday. It's behaving like every other verb, so it's easy. But a lot of people go out of their way to, pra to, to, to use the have got. I haven't got a pen, which is perfectly fine. But it's, it's fine, but I would encourage you to use the easier form, okay? Tengo, I have. Tienes, you have. El tiene, he has. She has, it has, we have, you have, they have. Similar. So here we are in the affirmative, the present. I have. Let's practice this. It's good to practice because, yes, you're going to hear it all the time, and, yes, you can use it, and it's good to have an agility with it. But you don't have to use this structure. That's my point. But let's practice a little bit with it today to make sure that it is clear. I have... And the have got structure, I've got. You have, you have got. She has, she's got. It has, it's got. We have, we've got. You have, you've got. They have, they've got. Now in the negative, I don't have. I haven't got. You don't have, you haven't got. She doesn't have, she hasn't got. It doesn't have. It hasn't got. We don't have. We haven't got. You don't have. You haven't got. They don't have. They haven't got. 
Now the interrogative, do I have, have I got? Do you have, have you got? Does he have, has he got? Does she have, has she got? Does it have, has it got? Do we have, have we got? Do you have, have you got? And do they have, have they got? Okay, so it's very simple. It's not hard. But the reason I encourage this simpler form, it's easier, and the problem is the have got form can't be used in every case. For example, when we change to the past, we have to use the first structure. I have a pen. I have a pen. Yesterday, I had a pen. We don't say yesterday, I had got. No, no se dice. That's wrong. But if you stay with the I have a pen, then it's behaving like every other verb in English, except for the verb to be. It's behaving like every normal verb. And we're simply modifying it, giving an auxiliary verb in the negative, I didn't have a pen yesterday. No, I didn't have a pen. In the interrogative, did I have a pen yesterday? No, I didn't. Okay? It's behaving like every other verb. So, really, I encourage you to use this simple structure. Okay? I want to move on now. We'll, we'll review this again in the coming days, but I want to move on now and take a look at our vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. All right, it is time for the vocabulary of the day, our five words of the day. Anfitriona is the first word, which is hostess. We also say, I suppose, azafata in an, in an, in an airplane, in an air hostess. Por escrito, we say, in writing. Can you give it to me in writing? In writing, por escrito. Prestamo, this is a loan, a loan. Hmm. And we have the, with loan, we have the verb to lend. Every day I lend. Yesterday I lent. Lately I have lent. Ascenso. Ascenso. Or promoción. English is easy, ladies and gentlemen. Promotion. Promotion. Ooh, they gave me a promotion. Great. Oh, here we go. This is a good word. Emisora de radio. ¿Cómo se dice? Here we are. W where am I? I'm at the radio station. The radio station, yeah. What's your favorite radio station? Is it Vaughn Radio? Oh, good, thank you. Radio station, emisora de radio. All right, we have one more thing. We're running out of time, but the last point, I'll just mention it quickly, and we'll, we'll practice with this tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to look at questions where we don't need the auxiliary verb, typically occurring with the question word who or with what. And this happens when the who or the what represents the subject in the answer. So, who broke the lamp? I want to know who broke the lamp. We don't say who did break, because who, that's our subject. John broke the lamp. <gasps> who broke the lamp? John broke the lamp. Well, we're out of time. I'd love to talk about this, but I'm completely out of time. So, we'll take a look at this tomorrow. It's very interesting. So be sure to tune in and listen tomorrow. I'm going to take a break, but I'll be back in a few minutes with the advanced portion of today's class. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.